Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in. Of course, I am the Colonialist and this is the Acromimix Octospinosus Colony and a further update on how they're getting on since the last episode. Before we have a look at what's happened, please take this chance to like, subscribe and of course hit the bell icon for more episodes. This journey has been quite the incredible roller coaster. If you have been following, many of you know that I've had difficulty with the heating element that came with the setup and I've had other issues that I've had to work around. So it's, it's been incredibly difficult to maintain them at their correct temperatures. And I'll go into a little bit more about the interesting behaviors that they've been getting up to since. So previously the colony had buried the fungus. They've now decided to remove the roof of the chamber that they had created. I presume because the fungus is starting to grow too large for that chamber. I came home midway through this deconstruction and at first I was a little bit confused as to what they were doing until I watched the workers removing the earth and moving it over on top of the leaves just to the left of the footage here. I was really excited to be able to see the fungus again and I even caught a couple of glimpses of the queen. Emotionally it's been pretty intense and it was nice to know that both the fungus and the queen and the colony are all doing well. I finally managed to locate some privet which I've now put into the setup and they're happily enjoying that. Before I did this though I came home again this was the day after and I found that where they had removed the earth the cap that was stopping them from going into the other chamber had come loose and it was resting on top of the fungus so I decided to take this opportunity to move them into a new location which would be safer for them and the fungus. I've also placed a pot on top of them whereas before they would always relocate now they've decided to remain underneath the pot. This allows them to create a better environment to care for the fungus and I'm hoping to see a lot more growth now. So this is their new location. This is what they've been up to. I must say I'm starting to feel a lot more comfortable and confident in how they're doing. So let's just take a look previously at some of the issues that have been occurring with the colony. This is some of the previous footage from last episode when I explained how they had buried the fungus into the chamber and some of the foods that I was currently feeding them. I had from this point already got rid of the hydro heating system that they had in place. I just could not get it to work. I don't know if it's a problem with the unit or a problem with the way it is, but it just was not functioning for me. So I replaced that and I got a 60 watt heat bulb which sits above their setup. The massive challenge has occurred due to the pandemic as I've ordered a dimming thermostat which is specialized for using heat lamps and I've been unable to receive it. It's been two weeks since that order and time is still going on and it's not arrived. So I've had to do this all manually while I'm working 15 and a half hour shifts over this time. With the weather we've been having as well, it has created many more challenges as the temperature has been spiking. Luckily where they're situated, there's enough of a draft to keep them cool. And you know, I've just been lucky. It is that simple. I have honestly just been lucky with them. With summer just around the corner, and the temperatures set to rise even higher than 30 degrees Celsius. I'm looking at ways that I can keep them cool and protect them from dying out. As you may know, 30 degrees Celsius plus is detrimental to the health of the colony and can render the queen infertile or cause her to pass away from the heat. It is a delicate balance and it's very difficult to maintain. So what I'm looking at at the moment is a hydro cooling system that is used in computers, which I'm going to attach to an on off thermistor. And hopefully this will allow me to regulate the temperatures in the heat to keep them cool and at around 24.5 degrees Celsius, which is the sweet spot for the fungus. So the fungus shows the best growth at this temperature. And really and truly, when you have this species, your main care that you're providing for is of course the fungus. The ants will do most of the work in tending it, but you need to make sure that the environment replicates its needs so that they can do the job that they are there to do. I will be keeping you all updated on how this goes and the challenges I face in doing so. If you're watching this and you have knowledge in how these hydro cooling systems work and how I can get them to turn on once the heat gets past a certain point so that it cools down the setup, please get in contact because I'd love to hear from you and understand more about how I can develop this to create a safe and stable environment for my leaf cutters. After all, my main priority is their care. 
So this brings me to the end of today's episode. Thank you for watching, thank you for tuning in, and thank you for supporting the channel. Of course, without you guys, I can't do it. And you know, I, I appreciate all the feedback I get and all the messages that I've got lately over my last Facebook post, over the colonies that suffered from the heat wave and unfortunately have passed away. So guys, stay awesome. Thank you very much for all the feedback that I've got and I hope to hear from you all soon. Follow me on Facebook, you know, I'm very active within the communities. If you have any problems or I can help you in any way, I'm more than willing to do so. And you know, it's been fantastic being a part of this community. So until next time guys and girls, this is The Colonialist signing out. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe and hit that bell icon. I'll catch you next time. Thank you.